Question number two. Question number two. All right, question number two A says, um, write as a single fraction in its lowest terms um, x minus 2 over 3 plus um, x plus 1 over 4. This is algebraic fraction. This is algebraic fraction. Here's what I will do. I will put these in brackets. Um, to tell the honest the truth, the brackets are not all that essential because, you know, because the sign here was what? Positive. If the sign here was negative, the brackets would be extremely essential. So what I say is, just write brackets all the time. Whether it's positive or what? Negative. It's going to help to prevent you from making an error, which is why we put the brackets. Then now, if you are adding or subtracting fractions and the denominators are different, you must find it. What is the LCM? Then I'm going to say 3 into 12. So it's 4 times the numerator, which is x minus 2, plus whatever sign is here, write it back here. 4 into 12. 3. So it's 3 times the numerator, which is x plus 1. Next, let's simplify the top. I'm going to remove the brackets by applying distributive law. Distributive law says whatever is in the bracket is multiplied by what is immediately outside the bracket. 4 times x, 4 tools, plus 3 times x, 3 times 1, all over, let's group like terms, 4x plus 3x, minus 8 plus 3, and this is all over what, 12, what is 4x plus 3x, so this is 7x, what is minus 8 plus 3? Minus 5. This is minus 5 all over 12. Can that be simplified further? That is the answer. That is, um, did you get that? B. B says, write an equation in X to represent each of the following, each statement below. Do not solve the equation. It says, write an equation in X to represent each statement below. Do not solve the equation. I, hear this. They said you must write an equation in X. When four is added to a certain number, when four is added to a certain number, so I'm assuming that that certain number must be what? So, 4 is added to a certain number, so that's x plus 4. Then let's say that what? Um, just the result is the same. Sorry. Let's go again. When 4 is added to a certain number, so that's 4 plus x. The result is the same as half in the number and adding 10. Half in the number. What is the number? So the result is the same, so this is equal to a half x plus what? 10. Did you write that for your first equation? Yeah. That's what he was asking you to do. When 4 is added to a certain number, the result is the same as what? Half in the number and then adding what? Half in the number means what? You multiply it by a half. That is what he meant. Next. Squaring a number and subtracting 6. I, I. Squaring a number and then subtracting 6. Give the same result as doubling the number. So this is equal to double the number and adding 9. Did you write that for your second answer? That's what they were asking. That's what they were asking to write. See. C. All right, in C we have input, and the input is x, and um, so next we have, so input, next we have multiply by 3,
Then we have um, add five. Add how much? Five. five. And then we have what? Output y. We have output. And the output is y. y. Can I tell you what this is simply showing you? This is simply showing you this. Y is equal to 3x plus 5. That is exactly what it's showing you. Y is the what output and x is the input. So by going through this process, what you're calculating is what? Y. y. But what, do you, what is your input? X. So what must you do to the x? And then what? And why are you going to get you to do that? That's how you do it. Y is equal to 3x plus 5. I use information from the diagram to write a formula for y in x. This is what they want for i. That's all they want. Y is equal to 3x plus 5. Is that what you wrote? Yes, sir. Very good. If the number 4 is the input, what is the input? What is the input? X. X. If the number 4 is the input, what number would be the output? So it's simple. I'm going to say when x is equal to 4, y would be 3 times 4 plus 5. This is 12 plus 5. The output y would be 17. Triple i. If the number 8 was the output, what is the output? Y. Output is y. So triple i. When y is equal to 8. Remember, this is what we have. We're going to have 8 would be equal to what? 3x plus what? 5. Positive 5 come over and become what? So I have 8 minus 5 is equal to 3x. Therefore, 3x is equal to 3. Any problems? No, all I did was turn around the equation. 8 minus 5 is 3. All I did was what? Turn it around, which you can't do with an equation. Let's divide both sides by 3. X is equal to 1. If the, in, if the output is 8, the input would have been 1. If the output is 8, the input would have been 1. Sir. Yes. If you could have, you could have. If you carry this over here, get minus 3x, and carry it over and get what? Minus 8. You could have. No problem. I still get, it should get the same answer. Alright, guys, hear this. Reverse the formula written, in C, written, written at CI above to write x in terms of y. So now we're at um, IV. IV. This, the starting formula is y is equal to 3x plus 5. Now they want you to make, right now y is the subject. They want you to make x the subject. Are you ready? Let's do that. So if x is the subject, I must have x by itself on one side. Positive 5 come over and become what? Negative 5. Help me? Negative 5. We have y minus 5 is equal to 3x. Remember, what I want by itself on one side is just what? X. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. When I do that, what left over here is so? X. X is equal to y minus 5 all over 3. That is what I want you to do. We reverse the formula to make what? X the subject. Lastly, D. Lastly, D. Solve the following simultaneous equation. This is 2x d 2x plus 3y is equal to 9. And 3x minus y is equal to 8. Um, equation 1, equation 2. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to solve that using the method of elimination. Now, it is possible to either eliminate x or y. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to eliminate y. To eliminate y, 
the number in front of y must be the same in both equations. What is the number here? What is the number here? Y. I can't eliminate them unless they are the same. To get them to be the same, I'm going to multiply equation 1 by the number in front of y in equation 2. What is the number in front of y in equation 2? Number 1. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 1. What happens when you multiply something by 1? When you multiply something by 1, it remains the same. So 1 times all of that going to be what? 2x plus 3y is equal to 9. Equation 1 times 1. Then I'm going to multiply equation 2 by the number in front of y in equation 1. What is the number in front of y in equation 1? 3. I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 3. 3 3's. Three, 3 times y. 3 eighths. This is equation 2 multiplied by 3. Now I'm at the point where I'm going to eliminate y. At this point, when the number in front of y is the same, to eliminate y, I'm going to either add or subtract the two equations. Please note, if the signs of y is the same, you must add. If the signs were, sorry, if the signs were what? The diff if the signs were the same, you would subtract. Since the signs are different, you must add. If the signs were the same, you'd have to subtract. Because the signs are different, you must add. Let us add the two equations. 2x plus 9x. Trust me, this gone. 3 plus minus 3 is 0. That gone. Yeah. Is equal to 9 plus um, 24. Okay. Divide both sides by what? X is equal to 3. Now that I have that value of X, shh. I think you're right. Y is 1. Now that I have this value of x, I'm going to substitute this value of x into any of the two original equations. I'm going to use which, which equations? The one, the first one or the second one? Yeah. Alright, let's use it. 2x plus 3y is equal to 9. Oh, what is x? 3. So this is 2 times 3 plus 3y is equal to 9. 2 trees plus 3y is equal to 9. Positive 6 goes over and become what? 3y is equal to 9 minus 6. 3y is equal to 3. Last step. Divide both sides by 3. y is equal to 1. x is 3 and y is equal to 1. Alright, this is question number 2.